Okay. Um, so we were talking about that you can go to um, uh, our YouTube channel, FGCLR Media on YouTube, and all of our services are in date order posted. And um, let me mute my sound on my phone. Um, and um, so Sunday morning, I did talk on the ninth chapter of the book of Proverbs. I was talking about these, you know, two women in the Bible. I don't guess that anyone when I was in Babylon or out in the Pentecostal world uh, of, of Christianity before I came to the body of Christ, I had never but heard anybody mention that, you know, the Bible's talking to two women and uh, the true church and the false church. Uh, and, but it is true, and in most cases, once you see that and look at it that way, you you can see it. So I talked about the two women, the wisdom hath builded her house uh, and hewn out her seven pillars, uh, killed her beast, mingled, prepared her table, mingled her wine. That's talking about the, the true church there the early church and then the restored church down here. But then later in the chapter, it goes to the foolish woman, which is talking about the harlot system or the false church. Uh, I, I'm not going to go and read it um, today necessarily, but you could read it yourself. Zechariah in the fifth chapter, verse 9 Zechariah prophesied that there were two women, and uh, one of them was, I, I can't remember, I think, called, uh, 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 what was that name? Um, anyway, they were, one of them was, uh, let's see, is that is that in Zechariah that I'm thinking? Um, No, I'm thinking of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 23, verse 2 through 9, talking about the two women. One of them was called, name was Ahola, and the other one was Aholaba. One was Samaria, and the other one was Jerusalem. And they both were harlots. They both played the harlot. And, of course, it's, that's talking about the, the Samaritans of Judaism and um uh, the Judaizers that wouldn't accept Christ, and they they played a harlot against Christ, uh, committed spiritual fornication or adultery against Christ in the early church. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to read it because it's pretty it's pretty gross to read, but you could go back and read it if you wanted to. But um, in I was going to. Uh, talk a little bit about Proverbs 7, also chapter 7, Sunday morning, but we just didn't get to it, and I won't be able to get to everything I'm going to say today. Most of you have heard most of what's said about these chapters, but you know, sometimes we go for long periods of time, and we never cover some of these subjects that are foundation subjects and their their keys you know to have the keys of knowledge that unlock the understanding about the bible is really really important you you there's no way you can either obtain or gain or maintain a vision without having these keys and so there's key chapters there's key scriptures that uh are revelatory. They, they give us revelation. And uh, so um, I might just um, 
Let's see, brother Painter. Is is pretty much everybody in? I forgot for you to get. You'll have to give it back to me for me to be able to uh, share my screen share. Um. So you're the host now, brother Smith. Okay. So I can screen share it. And I'll open it up bigger. Okay, and I can move this if it's in your way. What all can y'all see? Do y'all just see my picture? Or do you see all everybody? See, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six pictures there. Six, six of y'all's beautiful faces. What we see is your Bible uh, screenshot predominantly and then your picture in the upper right hand corner okay well that that's good because it's not in the right um uh, well can you see my resource guide over here where my mouse is yes okay is the is my picture still in the right hand corner above that or is it to the left in the right hand corner of it's, the box it's 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 in the right upper right hand corner of on your reason of the screen yes sir. that's not what see i could i'm moving it all over and y'all can't tell i'm doing that can you no sir we cannot we see the pointer on your mouse that's all we see okay yeah. okay that's fine well <clears throat> just so you know so that you don't stick your tongue out at me or anything i can see y'all <laughs> so <clears throat> but there's probably enough screen not enough screen for y'all but but I think it's good. Um, anyway, I want to keep talking a little bit about these women. Um, and in my notes, I probably don't have all the notes that I'm going to mention uh, as we read this. But here, this first note, I do have two women up here under the, that <clears throat> chapter 7, verse 1, true church and false church, Proverbs chapters 9, wisdom called to her and foolish. And the foolish woman, false church, chapter seven, the strange woman called a harlot, which is the false church, and wisdom, which is the true church. And chapter 31 mentions the virtuous woman, which is symbolic of the true church. Um, Ahab's wife and Jezebel in the Old Testament are symbolic of the dragon the civil world leader and the harlot, a world religious system in a, and actually that should be actually, and okay, let me write this up here, the seventh. And actually, eight heads of the beast in Revelations 13 and 17. <clears throat> I'll put Revelations there so it'll recognize it better. Bring it back up and it'll probably recognize that. Yeah, Revelation 17 chapters in Matthew 24 40 41 two women in the field Jesus spoke of and he mentioned in the 17th chapter of of Luke two women will be grinding talking about when when Jesus returns <clears throat> two two men in one bed one will be taking the other left two women will be grinding together and one will be taking the other left Two men will be in a field, one will be taking the other left. That's that's talking about the two, the two churches and two two types of ministry, the true ministry and false ministry. <clears throat> two men in one bed, the uh, symbolically per, uh, uh, prophetical, prophetically, <clears throat> a bed is symbolic of the church, the true church and false church. Two men going to be in the bed. 
well, they're all going to be, it's, you know, it's a resting, it's a place of rest. But of course, Isaiah says that, um, somebody could give me that scripture where the bed is too sh uh, short and the covers uh, are not enough to cover you. I can't remember the exact words of that scripture, but it's talking about, you know, I don't know if you ever tried to lay down on a little old love seat or something and you, it was too little for you to really get stretched out and be comfortable on. Then you didn't have covers that would literally cover you and it'd freeze. I've, I've slept like that before. I've wrestled all night trying to get underneath the little old bitty blanket that I've had being cold and, and on a little bitty bed that I couldn't relax on. That's what, that's what Babylon, the false church, is like. It's not it's in Isaiah 28, 20. Okay. Um, here we go there. Isaiah 28, 20. Yeah, for the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on, and the covering narrower than he can wrap himself in it. It's just a good picture of, of a false religious uh, way. Um, you know, it's, it's a picture of the false religious church. And, you know, <clears throat> right now we're in a, we're still in a restoration period uh, where God's got a lot of people out in Babylon. And, there's a lot of good people out there. We, we have to, you, you have to be careful, you know, that you don't condemn the whole thing when you realize that God hasn't, he hasn't judged that system yet. It's everybody out there is not a harlot, but there are people that are. There are people that are just a part of the system. Uh, there's people, uh, I mean, I personally, I personally have had saints in my church under my ministry that have left the body and went into the Catholic church because they don't want anybody telling them what to do and they want the easiest road that they can take and still think they can make heaven. And of course, they never really got a vision or they never would have done that. But, but that just shows you that, you know, um, you, you can hear this message and, and not hear it. I mean, it can just go right past you because of your spirit. You, you, you don't want to, you don't want any judgment whatsoever. You want, the, you know, the easiest way there is to believe that you can have eternal life and, and not have any judgment, not have any correction on your life. Um, so <clears throat> there, there will be two men in the field. Of course, this field is wherein lies a, a great treasure, a field of a pearl of great price. There's men working. There's two women grinding. There's two women grinding uh, at the stone, you know, with a millstone. There's, uh, where is that at here? Luke 17. Two women, women grinding together right now. Babylon is still grinding. It shows that uh, uh, in the 18th chapter of the book of Revelations, the, she still has a millstone, but that will be taken away from her. Uh, when God judges that system, there won't be the sound of a millstone anymore, Revelations 18 says. And uh, we may look at that later if we have time, but but uh, two men in the field, that's, that's two ministries uh, working in, in uh, the field of the gospel. And one's going to be taken, one's going to be left. One, one will be taken in judgment. The only thing that once God judges Babylon, there won't be any more Babylon. Uh, the only thing that will be left will be the true church, the body of Christ. God will gather all of his people. It can be gathered out of that. The only thing that will be left will be uh, God's 
God's people. John, I think in the second epistle of St. John, the first, I think it's, it may be in the second chapter, first verse, but, but he says to the elect lady, he calls that, that's one, that's the true church. We are the elect of God. The body of Christ is his elected people. Uh, those that have heard him. He said, my sheep know my voice and no other voice will they hear. And so uh, anyway, that, that uh, I just thought I might would mention that. Uh, anyway, let me do a little bit of reading here. Uh, in, in Proverbs 7, it says, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. And my law is the apple of thine eye. Uh, bind them upon thy fingers. That, that's, that's really symbolic of a fivefold ministry that you, you make sure you've got a ministry that can keep, uh, keep you, help you to keep God's commandments and live. And that they have become the apple or the very core of your vision, your eye. And, uh, and keep them on the table of your heart. That's, that's really your mind. It, your mind has got to be meditating on the things of God until you get it. I like to, you know, almost every night when I go to bed, that's just something I've kind of made into a habit. I almost always, I was thinking uh, just now when I'm talking, I don't remember where I went to sleep, but it was before I got to the New Testament. There's a lot of times when I lay down at night, I'll, I'll go through all the books in the Bible in chronological order. You know, I'll just, I just start out Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, uh, and Ruth, then I'll, you know, and I'll go through first, second Samuel, first, second Kings, first, second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Then I'll go to the poetic books, you know, Job, uh, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, those five books. And then I'll go to the, the five major, you know, and I, anyway, I'll just start naming all the books of the Bible. If I but I go to sleep a lot of times before I ever get to the New Testament. Sometimes I'll say the New Testament first because I know I, I ain't going to get there. <laughs> I, I'm a fa I can go to sleep pretty fast. So, But if I get through the whole Bible, then I'll, I'll always like naming the, the 12 apostles. Do you know I found uh, most people can't name the 12 apostles? You know, so I, that's something I made in my memory some time back, you know, as I just, I, you know, start off with Simon called Peter and his brother, Andrew, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, you know, those four. And I'd name four more. You know, I'd name Philip, Matthew, Bartholomew, and Thomas, those four. Now I needed four more, you know, so uh, who is it? J uh, Judas, not Iscariot, the son, Judas, the son of, uh, what's his name? Uh, It'll come to me in a minute, but then also Thaddeus, who was Jude, he was also a Judas, but they never called him that, probably didn't want to be, and then Simon the Zealot, and then Matthias, who took Judas Iscariot's place. So I'll go through those, you know, just helps me to keep, you, know, you can do something like that at night, or scripture that you want to, you know, be able to quote. I just do things like that at night, going, you know, I ain't doing nothing laying there trying to go to sleep anyway. So I like getting my mind on the things of God. But um, anyway, to, to, you know, to keep our, that, you know, to keep the, the apple of our eye, our main vision about life is the things of God. And of course, I'm, I'm one of these people that I, I don't think, you ought to be, you know, you got to find a balance where you you deal with the reality of nature, natural life, our natural life. And, uh, you know, we do have, uh, I've, I've been mentioning this lately, there is such thing as a human mind, but 
but all of our human minds are corrupted by with carnality, the corruption of the of the fall and nature of man and the corruption that's in this world. You know, I, I have said the four things you are going to have to endure in this life is number one, you've got you have got to respond to God. If God's dealt with you at all, then you have to respond to it. You know, and you are highly blessed if God's ever dealt with you. But there's some people that don't know nothing about God. But if God's ever dealt with you, then you're you're gonna have to deal with the fact that that you you have to respond to God's dealing with you. He, you know, this is an individual thing which I say is is I'm using the serpent, Satan, the devil. And the dragon is the four things you have to contend with in this life. And the first one is, is individual, and that's a serpent. It's your, your responding to God and having to try to get, you know, crawl under a rock. God, you don't want to be judged. You don't God, no correction. Um, you know, uh how you respond, like Adam and Eve in the garden, they responded to the serpent. You're not going to, we're not going to die. We're going to be just like he is. Or, you know, that's a, an individual response, but when it moves to Satan, it becomes a group spirit. And, and in the old Testament, it started out and it's, it's always been an adversary. It's an adversary of God. And it's always been a religious spirit. It's always been a religious spirit of God's people, you know, trying to come up with something else, you know, some other uh, ideology about, about life rather than accepting the word of God and, and fighting against, you know, if, I mean, you could follow it in the Bible. Um, uh, you know, I, I guess probably the, one of the biggest things in the, in the Old Testament course you you can look at it with you know way back with egypt uh pharaoh he was called a dragon that was a dragon power world power of religion false religion uh of egypt and and civil power that ruled the whole world known world at that time but then if you even if you get to um uh israel you know, when, when it finally divided into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, Israel and Ju Jerusalem, well, you know, you've got, you've got uh, Jeroboam was, of course, he was one of Solomon's sons that pulled 10 tribes away and set up a false religion, set up a false priesthood, and uh, that became an adversary against God. Jesus, if you remember when he went to the well, the little Samaritan woman at the well, he told her, he said, you, you worship, you know not what. She was a Samaritan. She had been so down with that false religion of, of Samaria was the capital of, of Israel. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, so, but he said, we know what we worship. The, the, those from Jerusalem, the, the, those uh, Jews that had stayed under the law of Moses, they knew what they were worshiping under the law. Uh, but, but I'm just showing you how in that divided kingdom, 10 kingdoms there, and the reason Jeroboam pulled those 10 kingdoms away and would let them go to the feast days or worship in the, in the temple uh, was because he was afraid that, uh, you know, that Rehoboam would pull him back under him, under temple worship. And so he set up a false system to hold those people. And uh, so, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's pictures all the way through. Um, but then uh, let me, let me go on here. Uh, because there's so much you can say about this that you can never get done. Uh, verse three, I said, bind them upon thy fingers. That's, that's having a ministry, you know, 
uh, up on the table of your heart, say unto wisdom, thou art my system. This is the true church. And call understanding thy kinswoman. This is another woman. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, the false church that becomes strange, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding. I, I, I looked at a, a, a video that didn't have anything to do with the Bible this week, but I, I may even want to show it at some point in church or even online because uh, it's a really good example of, of how uh, propaganda can destroy knowledge. You know, uh, like, you know, I mean, it's, it's really good. This, this guy showing, he said, you know, if I, if I left my house this morning and I set my alarm, because I, I live in a place where I feel like I need alarm on my home. And so every morning before I leave, I set the alarm. But he said, but if you come along later in the day and you say, you, 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 you forgot to set your alarm this morning. I was there with you and I watched you and you didn't set it. But he said, but I know I said it. But he keeps working on me and telling me you did not set your alarm. And if he's strong enough, he can implant doubt inside me and make me think that maybe I didn't say it. So even though I have knowledge of true facts, he can implant a falsehood and take my knowledge away. And he can destroy, eradicate my knowledge. For you to have confidence, you have to have knowledge. Or, you know, for you to have trust and confidence in yourself or anybody else, even God, you've got to have some knowledge. You can't, you can't be like this, these simple ones that, that he's saying he saw through his window, the casement of his window, and, and among the youths that were void of understanding. See, they didn't have anything to erode to start with. So they were easy to lure. Uh, and that's the way uh, some people are. You know, in the body, we've always had this scenario where we've talked about cutting off the ham at Christmas. You know, we, I think everybody's heard that, hadn't you? You know, the, the girl marries this boy. If you hadn't heard it, I'll tell it to you real quick. She marries this boy. It's Christmas, and so she wants him to help her prepare Christmas dinner. So, I mean, he wants to help her. You know, I don't know if she really wanted to do it or not. It's just a story. <laughs> so she said, well, here, if you want to do something, well, here's the ham. Cut the end off of that ham. And so he gets a knife. He gets the ham and takes it out of the wrapper and all, and he starts to cut it. But he says, wait a minute. Why, why are we cutting this ham? Why are we cutting the end of it off? She said, I don't know. It's the way mama always done it, always turned out great. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to do it like mama did it. And he said, well, that, we need to know why we're doing this. And so he makes her call her mama. Her mama says, mama, why did you do that? Why did you cut the end of the hand? She said, I don't know. That's the way my mama always did it. And she always turned out good. And that's the way I've always done it. And that's what I taught you. He said, that ain't good enough for me. Call your grandma. So she called her grandma and said, grandma, you know, we're having my husband's wanting to know why did you cut off the end of your ham every Christmas before you cooked it? And she said, well, honey, I never had a pan big enough to cook, cook a whole ham. I had to cut the end of it. And so we use that scenario of how, you know, some people just keep cutting off the end of the ham. They don't know why. It's raised Methodist. That's what Uncle Joe and Aunt, Aunt Mill or whatever her name is. is you know, that, that's what they always were. That's what my mama was. That's where they went. That's where we went. We never questioned anything about the what the church taught 
or whatever church they went to. Some people just keep cutting the end of the ham off. They never ask questions, you know. Uh, and, and that's what I'm telling you about, you know, what this guy on this video is actually getting down to is, is showing how a person can rob you of your knowledge. If they can implant enough doubt and take away your knowledge, whether it was fact or not. If they can get you to doubt, then, then you've, you've lost knowledge. So he ends this video saying, look, and, and here's what he says. Like, for an example, the question about 911, did it really happen or not? There are some people question that. The Holocaust, did it really happen or not? Um, Anything that you want to do, uh, let me see here. Somebody trying to, oh, nobody's trying to get in. Okay. So uh, he said, you know, you, you can't give the right, you don't have the facts on everything. You don't have the answer to everything. But he said, but, but there are people that do have answers that we call them experts. There's people that has answers rather than just somebody giving you false propaganda, uh, false ideology. And we're living in a world that's absolutely plundered with it. You know, the, you can't trust the news media anymore. You don't know who to believe about a lot of things. But, <clears throat> you know, there are people that are experts in certain fields uh, that can help you get, you know, with your facts. Because the fact is, you need to know things that are important in your life. And you don't need to just say, well, you know, I don't know if it's this way or that way. And therefore, I'm not, I'm not going to deal with it. Well, that's what he was saying. The fact of accepting, just accepting what somebody just keeps throwing at you or saying, I don't know. Just, you know, I ain't going to deal with it. He said, that, that's not the right answer. The answer is rebut, rebut, rebut. You, you need to know what's important to you in life. And certainly the things of God are important. Of course, what this guy made me feel like, I thought, well, I'm an expert in the word of God. That's, that's, you know, that's what I'm working on is being an expert so I can help people that don't know. <clears throat> but, um, you know, whatever fields you're working in, you, you need to, you know, and that's what God gave a ministry for. Everyone doesn't have time to study the word of God on an almost continual basis, and, and they're not called for that, nor are they given a gift for that for God's people. <clears throat> and, but what I'm telling you is you, if you have enough hunger, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after the uh, uh, word of God, they'll be filled. The truth of God's word, God will, you know, he's not going to leave a soul hungry if they're really searching him. He said, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. And so, um, anyway, verse eight here says, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house in the twilight of the evening. And in the black and dark night, in other words, in his ignorance, he's being wooed into a religious system. That's who this woman is. She's, she's calling on simple ones uh, that, that don't know any better. They're not going to even ask any questions. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. Of course, this woman... In Revelations 17, and in 17, she's called a harlot. In 18 through 19, it's really, really, I should change that. Well, right quick, take me a minute. See if I can go back here. Huh. I don't know if I know how to do that. Let's see if I can do it this way. There. 
17, the 17th chapter, 18th chapter, down to 19 chapter, second verse, shows this, this is a harlot system. She's called a harlot. Uh, and, and uh, but here, um, she's in the attire of a harlot, the subtle of heart. She's loud and stubborn. Her feet abideth not in her house. These, you know, I don't know how many people you've met that are just religious people. They're just propagating their religion, but they don't really, they don't really have a good foundation. They don't hold their feet in the things of God. They're, they're just going everywhere. You know, they're like wandering stars or clouds without water. Now is she without, now in the streets, lieth at wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him. Here, this, I'm, I'm showing you this, the, the spirit of Satan, one of the four things you got to encounter and deal with in life. One is religion. One is false religion. You got to find the truth of God's word. There's plenty of religions out there in the world, and there's going to be a religious system in the end of every world, and you're going to have to respond to it you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, uh, and it's an adversary against God. If it's not, if it doesn't find the truth and doesn't become a part of God's true people, then it's going to be false. Uh, you remember Jesus taught about uh, uh, Help me here with the thought, the, the, the five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins. I, I just say that those are, those are people that are under the fivefold ministry of the true church and people under the fivefold ministry of the false church that are foolish. They didn't get any oil, which is knowledge, in their lamps. They... They all slept and slumbered, which I think is just a picture. They all waited, knowing that the Lord was coming. But the wise ones, they put oil in their lamps. They, 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 they purchased oil. They told the foolish ones when they wanted their oil, they said, I can't, we can't give you what we got. You can't get it that way. You're going to have to go to the market and buy it for yourself. And that, that's the truth. I mean, like, a minister can give you the information. They can give you the knowledge. <clears throat> the only way you're really going to understand it, if you receive it, and it has to be made your own. You've got, you're going to have to go through the process of going through life and applying the word of God to it and proving the word of God out, that it is the truth. And for you to for you to make it your own, for, for you to buy it. What Jesus say in Revelation is, buy of me gold tried in the fire. You're, <laughs> that's how you buy it. You're, you're going to have to be tested and tried in it. And it's got to become yours. Uh, you, can't, you, you, can, you can share knowledge. You can impart knowledge to people. It's not, not just a five-fold ministry that can do it. They can give it to the saints. The saints can give what they've received, but whoever receives it is going to have to, they're going to have to purchase it. Um, let's see, where are we at? So she caught him, verse 13, uh, and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore, uh, came I forth to meet thee, diligently seek thy face, I found thee. I've decked my bed with coverings and tapestry and carved works with fine linen, linen of Egypt. I've perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloes and cinnamon. See, they, religion has learned how to put on religious um, uh, they, uh, ways to show themselves to be religious. In fact, they can deceive, they deceive people. Uh, I had someone stop me at my car yesterday, you know, hand me a sheet of paper, 
said, look, we're, we're doing this. Could you give us a donation? I said, no, our church has got all the responsibility we can handle in, in meeting needs of others. Our church does that, you know, in your church, uh, you know, I appreciate what you're doing, but I don't know anything about you. And I don't know, you know, I didn't go through a whole lot because it's instead of stop sign, you know, but, <clears throat> but the bottom line is, is I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I, I can't just help every, si every system that is asking for help that I don't even know if it's true. We got too many shenanigans going on in this world today. I will admit once in a while, I'll get a feeling for somebody and whether or not it's my sympathy or God really dealing with me. Sometimes I don't have time to know, but sometimes I'll give somebody a dollar bill or $5 bill or whatever. Uh, but but, the, but they, they'll do this in the name of religion <clears throat> and, and pray on the meek and, and uh, the humble, you know. But anyway, she says, come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Uh, let us solace ourselves with love. So the good man is not home. He's gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and he'll come home at the day appointed. They do know out there that God is, there is a day of judgment. There is a coming of the Lord, but none of them know when it is. But most people don't have any idea when the Lord, of course, you know, today they'll think God may come at any time. You may go to some churches and they may tell you he can come tonight. You better get in the altar if you're not saved because the Lord may come tonight. Well, we know he's not coming tonight. We know there's too much got to be done yet. He he may come get an individual. They may lose their life for this night's over. He's not coming in judgment for his bride yet. Um, how does it say? He goeth, verse 22. Oh, verse 21. With her much fair speech, she causes him to yield. With flattering of her lips, she forced him. And he goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to slaughter and as a fool to the correction of stocks till a dart strikes through his liver as a bird hasteneth to a snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O you children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she's cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have slain, have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. That word hell there simply is talking about Sheol. And it's it's translated the grave 31 times, hell 31 times, the pit three times. But Sheol is, is basically the grave. Um, you know, uh, that's where a person enters into death. And um, so that chapter deals, and of course, then you go into eight chapters, starts talking about wisdom. It's really, it's really talking about Christ and the, the work he's. Uh, done throughout all of God's purpose, uh, even to the end. But uh, uh, the ninth chapter, you know, it ends similarly. And and let's see, did I put it here? Is it here? Uh, yeah, but he knoweth not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. So... <clears throat> Matthew 23, J Jesus mentioned, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. See, he's dealing with that religious spirit there, that they had a false ideology. They couldn't accept Christ as the Son of God. For you're like unto whited sepulchers, like gravestones, uh, graves, graveyards, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but are within full of dead men's bones and are of all uncleanness. So <clears throat> they're talking about these two women. And then uh, 
I won't have much time to go into it, but uh, let's just go ahead. I know most of the people here, I've talked about it not too awful long ago, but Revelation 17, I think it's still important. And I hope that some of the uh, people that maybe didn't get on tonight, of course, most people are on here, I think, but um, maybe they'll go back and be able to look at it on because some people need to rehearse some of this in there. But here in the 17th chapter of the book of Revelation, there came seven angels which had seven vials talk with me, saying to me, come here and I'll show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth on many waters. I don't really like reading that, but it is Bible, and sometimes it has to get real plain for people to get it. With whom the kings of the earth had committed fornication. Uh, two people are in the weight room. Let me see how to get them in here. Invite up here, join. Oh, there, Brother Keith Dodson, Brother Scott. Okay, they're joining. I'm sorry, you ones that's been out in the waiting room for a while. I, I'm sharing my screen, and so I, I didn't recognize anybody was not in. Um, so here we're in the Revelation 17 chapter. <clears throat> talking some more about the two women in the Bible that I I started this, this talk Sunday morning in Bible study. With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit and the wilderness and I saw a woman set upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and 10 horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. See, these are the things of God. Purple is a mixture of blue and red, <clears throat> which those were the, the, um, the curtains um, between the holy and holy place and and uh, go, going into the holy place and between the holy place and the holy of holies and uh, decked with gold uh, that that was all everything was gold in the holy place uh, and the holy of holies precious stones and pearls um, having a golden cup full of abominations, you know, having the word of God, but you filled it with abominations and ideologies, filthiness of her fornication with, with the world, things that world religion, religious system. And on her forehead, a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. If you'll notice here, she's got daughters. She's a mother. All of these systems, all of these organizations are not biblical. They're not a biblical order. And they came out of the harlot system of the Catholic Church. And each one of those systems kept everything the Catholic Church gave them, except what maybe they got a revelation of. But if they never were able to go any further than just uh, a system, you know, uh, and holding on to the, the being like their mother. Uh, I, said, I saw a woman drunk with the blood of the saints, with the blood of martyrs of Jesus, which, you know, that's talking about the martyrs down through, and not only now, but the persecution and martyrs of the early church. Because <clears throat> he's dealing with this woman that was riding a scarlet colored beast that, you know, this having seven heads and 10 horns, those are the Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome. And of course, I make the seventh head America, the United States of America. And but the eighth is when the, the two horned beast will make an image to the beast, and, and the eighth head will it'll give power. 
back to the Pope and, and which will become the eighth head. And uh, <clears throat> so these 10 horns here in the 17th chapter, 10 kings <clears throat> that hadn't received the kingdom as yet. In the 13th chapter, those 10 kings, those 10 horns are the 10 provinces of Rome um, that was down through the dark ages. AD 325 was the 13th chapter when the, the Pope was made. Uh, he was made he was made a head there. He was made the head of the uh, head of the Roman Empire. Constantine made him the head. But here is this is down here uh, in the end of this world. And so what he's dealing with here, he's showing this system, this harlot system that's that is it's finally going to set up as let me let me just read a little bit more here. Uh, verse 10, there are seven kings, five are fallen. That's Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo, Persia, and Greece. One is, that's Rome at the time John wrote this, and the other's not yet come. And when he cometh, he'll continue a short space. Uh, I'm, I see that as being America. And the beast that was and is not, he is the eighth. That's the beast that was, uh, that was wounded uh, and, and unto death. He goes into perdition. Uh, but but he will be made the eighth head after this seventh head comes into existence that will continue for a short space. Verse 12, and the 10 horns which thou sawest are 10 kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. That's a prophetical hour, 15 years. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And they'll make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of Lord, King of Kings. And they are with him, are called and chosen and faithful. They send to him the waters which I saw, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. That's the world that finally, a world religious power, a dragon system, a civil and religious power gains control over, just like these seven heads have done, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia. Those are all dragon powers that have ruled during their time in the world. We've never been under a dragon power, but there is a dragon power coming in the end of this Gentile world, and it will. it's going to continue a short space, and then there will be a eighth head, and it, it will be defeated that's why it goes right out of the 17th chapter into God judging Babylon. This woman is going to be judged. Come out of her, my people. See, God's got a lot of people in her. And uh, when you teach on this and when you read on it, it's hard to hold a balance to not almost gain a hatred for and there's nothing wrong with having a bait, hatred for the false church and the ideology of it, but not for the God's people that's in there that are deceived and bound in there. But there are also people in there that uh, that that are pro propagating and promoting that system, and they'll promote it to the point that people will take the mark of the beast. They'll take, you know, they're going to take it in their foreheads. They're going to take that teaching in their foreheads. And uh, 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 they will are then, then, then those others that will take it in their hands will be even ministers. There's even going to be ministers that are not going to be able to stand under the persecution that's coming uh, in the restored church. Uh, and so uh, God's going to call his people out of this system. Uh, here in verse 8, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, 
for strong is the Lord who judgeth her. God's going to judge that system. Um, kings of the earth, you've committed fornication with her. They're going to stand far off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour, one prophetical hour, is thy judgment come. See, when God comes, when the, when the Lord comes, and there, there will be a 15, prof, 15 year prophetical hour that God is going to come and judge. The body will be in that judgment. It'll first, first judgment must begin at the house of God, but it'll be this ministry that'll judge that system with the truth of the word of God and the power of God that God, God will give the restored church just like he did the early church back there. Uh, and the merchants of the earth weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. That just means no man that, that gains the understanding. Uh, I'll skip on down here. The 17th verse for him one hour. So great riches has come to naught. Every shipmaster, every company in ships. See, these are these systems out here of Christianity and sailors. And as many as trade by the steep foot off, stood afar off, cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, said, what city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping, wailing, saying, alas, that great city wherein uh, were made rich all that had ships of the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she made desolate. Then it says, th this reveals, say, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. See, uh, God couldn't avenge the system of religion uh, of the fifth seal, those souls under the altar that were martyrs uh, during the dark ages. God couldn't avenge that because it wasn't time to judge the system. He had to let that system go. He said, you'll have to wait until your fellow brethren are killed in like manner. In other words, they'll have to go through this persecution y'all have went through in the end when I get ready to judge that system. When that system fully develops, there's going to be great, great judgment, great uh, uh, persecution. And when, when that system finally has reached its end, I will judge it, but I can't do it right now. And so in her was the found, found the blood of prophets and saints and all that were slain on the earth. After these things, I heard a great voice. I'm in the 19th verse because I think this is pertinent. Of much people in heaven saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments for he had judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. That was, see, after uh, 538 up until 15, uh, 1798, when the Pope was the head of the Catholic Church and the martyr, martyr martyrs were crucified and martyred back then. And so they had to wait a little season until the end. There we are, uh, what, what would you say? Uh, from 1500 till now, or 500 years, it's a little season compared to the whole 2000 year period, but God finally does he, he judges the system and avenges the blood of his servants that he promised he would avenge back there under the fifth seal. And so her smoke rose up forever and ever. What that means is smoke is an after effect of, of a fire. God's judgment is always sim, fire symbolic of God's judgment. And smoke it just shows there's been a fire. Their, their memory will never forget how God judged this the system of man in this world. And finally, the final judgment, the last enemy that'll be destroyed is death. 
and what produces that death is this falsehood and and corruption of man's sin and his ideology. I didn't mention the devil. Those four things you're going to have to contend with. I use the devil. It's not used. That word's not used in the Old Testament, but the world. See, it it's really became prominent. The 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 world not having to do with religion that doesn't it doesn't stand against God like God's adversary, but it is an adversary. I'm just I'm using that to show you that the things of this world that are um, uh, you know like just just everything that's ungodly that has an influence on people's lives, all your young people. Music, dress, fads, all kinds of things, you know, that are just the ways of the world. And uh, that's why the body, we've tried to keep the world out of the church as much as we possibly can uh, without focusing so much on what I mentioned, I think, or maybe our last uh, Zoom meeting, that I talked some about the mechanics of getting out of focus and and uh, m worshiping the mechanics more than our first love, the Lord and our intimacy and of salvation and what God's done for us and, and the, tr the truths that we found without, you know, all those mechanics are important, but you gotta hold the proper focus. And uh, so uh, the Lord is, uh, is helping us with these things to get the proper focus uh, on the things of God. And, and uh, so the world has a great, great influence and it's far more prolific on our young people than it is on our older people. However, many older people are so, so down in the world, there's little you can do about it to help a lot of people. But then, of course, the last, the fourth thing is a dragon power, which we've never had to deal with yet. But those who are alive and remain after the coming of the Lord and in, in a restored church will have to deal with a dragon system that's going to bring grave persecution on the church. We've never been under a world dictatorial power that has forced people into becoming a part of the beast system or suffer severe persecution. And those who are alive during that time, and I think there will be many people that will resurrect in the resurrection of the just that will have to endure that, uh, as well as those. Uh, thank God there is, what did Paul say? There, there's some that... Uh, that 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 won't die there's some that that that's going to finish this work and make the bride without having to go through a death you know uh, it looks like right at the latter part of god's judgment that some will they're still going to suffer and uh, so <clears throat> i'm uh, i'm in, in some ways, I'm thinking some of you younger men are going to have it harder than some of us older men. But let me tell you something. It's easy. It, it's, it's not a whole lot easier to hold on and not be satisfied with something less than a restored church. It takes men that's got grit, that God's put it in their heart to hold on and, and not be satisfied on this side of Jordan and still maintain a restored church that will finish this work of God in, in, in all of our lives. And so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you tonight. I know I've shared it with, and maybe, maybe not said it exactly like this, but one of the reasons I did this is I wanted, uh, I wanted to put it back in people's memory. And then we've got some people that are new in the church that I know have never heard it, that, and some of them aren't here tonight. And I, was, I was wishing they would be, 
but that's why one of the reasons I wanted to talk on this, but hopefully they'll, they'll, hopefully they'll, they'll get it. We'll try to remind them. Anyway, <clears throat> so <clears throat> thank you for listening to me and let me, let me see if I can, I can stop sharing and bring you back. There you go. <clears throat> and, um, but I feel like Peter at times that it, it, I'm not reluctant to put you in and remind you of things I know you've already heard. I get something out of it every time I talk about it. So I keep thinking y'all surely get something out of it that it re reestablishes it in your mind. If something's happened that, you know, somebody's eroded or implanted some doubt in your mind, well, I'm putting some facts back in your mind <laughs> to get you confidence again in your vision of the body of Christ and the keys of our teachings. So thank you again for listening to me and being attentive. And, and then uh, I mentioned before we started recording uh, that uh, we need to pray, keep praying for Brother Goss, Sister. Uh, they gave us a report from Canada, Sister McNabb, that he is doing some better. And that's a good, that's good to know. I want to thank you for praying for me. I'm I'm doing better. And uh, the painter family's over COVID and uh, the Durham, Jacob and Terry Durham family, uh, they're they're about through it. The uh, Phil Fisher families got through it with no, any, no, no real serious illnesses here. So we're thankful for that. Sister Smith's doing good. She's out of it. In fact, she, she did better than I did. Uh, I mentioned Brother Bear, pastor over Madison, Ohio. Uh, he's got colon cancer and it is spread into his body. It's not and contained in the colon, so <clears throat> we sure need to pay. He, he, he's a he's a younger pastor, but a very dedicated and very good good family that we need to hold them in our prayers. Uh, we got many needs throughout the body, so we just want to remember remember everyone. All of our assemblies have needs and. So maybe before we leave tonight, if we could everybody just unmute your microphone, we'll just pray together. Seemed like to me that's a that that seemed to me like it's just, just something, something good for us to pray together. Give the Lord a praise and thank you. Uh, I'm together that we've had here tonight. Would anyone like to mention a prayer request? That I mentioned, brother. Dale Strike, of course, passed away just in the last couple of weeks. And so we'll keep remembering Brother Strike, Brother Mark Strike, uh, there on Missoula, and uh, his family and the church there, of course. Uh, at this time. Brother Smith, yes. how are the McGowans? Uh, I haven't heard anything in the last couple of days, but I I think that's probably a good indication because he normally keeps me up, updated if there's anything. Uh, Brother Bill Daniel, everybody keep praying for him. I'm working on this. I'm like the little widow, the unjust judge. I'm asking God all the time to touch Brother Bill Daniels. He's not doing well at all. You know, he's a uh, congestive heart condition and he just has fluid on him all the time to the point he can't hardly go. And he just is a precious brother. I just want him to ask him God to consider him his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And uh, God would touch him. I just ask him God to do that. Uh, Sister Crow in our seminar, five years old and he recently hasn't been able to come to church. It's just a real 
make sure she don't like it if we come to church. So, well, let's remember <clears throat> those things. Uh, her sister Goss and the family there appreciate us continue praying for them and the Catholic Church. Oh, let's all ask God to be prepared to God. Precious. God Thank in the body, I just ask you for wisdom, and direction, and guidance. I bless your people. Such a direction. Blessings, Bill. Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'll stop the recording now. Mm-hmm.